Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by Nate Weiser. He's on the East Coast, and we are looking at NBA best bets here on Monday in the NBA playoffs. Two more games as this Mavs and Thunder series continues along, as well as the Cavs and the Celtics. As, as I mentioned, we got best bets up in this video. Also going to have play a props in a separate episode that we're bringing you each and every day now. So subscribe to that page. Continue to follow along with us all postseason. Also head to the lines.com. Use everything that we have up on the site right now to help you out with all these bets you're making this postseason, including that prop finder tool. Very helpful to make sure you're getting all the best odds and lines available to you from these books, giving us bets this postseason. Nate, let's go ahead and get into your first pick here for Cavs and Celtics. I will say also, we had a pretty great day there uh, on Sunday with the best bets, three and one, just the Knicks couldn't uh, make that a basketball game at all. Yeah, but a good live betting day uh, for me personally, because I I could read that in the first quarter and actually took the Pacers minus 16, minus 20 and took Brunson under and took Knicks team under. It was like, yeah, they got to They got to punt this one. So. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Cavs, I will take the points here. I, I will, I will buck the trend that every Celtics game has been decided by double digits so far in these playoffs and say, this one will actually be closer or, or they might even lose, but Cavs plus eight and a half. If you can grab it, the main reasoning is this, this, this team is different from the depleted Miami team we saw. And I know in game three is, is a carbon copy of Celtics dropping game two, handling in game three. I don't think they're going to handle the Cavs in the exact same way. To, to win these next three. I mean, they might win, but I think they're actually going to get into a close game here. Um, I, I think they're in game two. It wasn't just like laps of concentration. I think they were kind of exposed without Porzingis defensively. Um, and, and the Cavs, for whatever reason, could not, you know, sustain their offense in the second half, partially because Evan Mobley got, got dinged up there and basically didn't play the third quarter. If you take his other three, third quarter, his other three quarters, he went for 17 and eight, shot 70% and was exactly zero plus minus. So they were they were in the game when they had Mobley out there. And then, you know, he was kind of timid after that, didn't take advantage of the, of the mismatches. And Donnie apparently, you know, went up to him in the locker room 10 times, Josh, and was like, you need to be more aggressive. You need to be more aggressive. Like, basically, like, please, I need some help. But also, like, you got to realize, again, I've, I've said this over and over, Al Horford is 38, Luke Cornett is a goofball, Xavier Tillman would ruin the Celtics offense. So the Celtics do not have a five to deal with this young 22 year old who's got a crazy wingspan can affect the game on both ends. And, you know, I can get into him player props cause I think he's, he's ripe for an over here, but uh, I mean, the Cavs as a team in these last two are shooting 73% inside five feet because of this lack of rim protection. So I think the back door is very much open, even though the Celtics are incredible in the first half and they might be up around 10. Once again, I think the Cavs find a way in the third or fourth at some point to just trim this with the home crowd at their back wind at your back essentially and that Boston you know as we saw with the Dean Wade game can sometimes kind of fritter away these games on the road uh when they have a big lead the last two they're only scoring 19 in the fourth quarter shooting 23 percent from three Jason Tatum has not hit a three in the second half of these entire playoffs he's shooting 37 percent zero percent in the second half Derek White and Jalen Brown both negative 10 or worse in the second half of the last uh, of, of the last few here uh, I mean, that's just plus minus stuff, but like the point is like the Cavs are plus 30 net in this, in the last two second halves and Donnie kind of ran out of gas in this last one, but in general, like had been a fantastic second half player and they still are not like necessarily stopping him. Um, they're trying to get the ball out of his hands, make other guys beat them. And, and I think Levert and Garland have a history of at least doing pretty well against these Celtics. And, and if they step up to the plate with the home crowd again, uh, I think the Cavs can be in this game. I, I just think we're seeing that a little bit different. I'm not saying they can't be in this game. I'm not saying that the, that they're going to be the Heat by any means. Um, but I think I just believe in Boston this this year a little bit more. Um, not necessarily than even last year, to be honest. They got totally derailed last year. It's more so than than like I under, with Tatum playing the way that he's playing. They're still getting these W's. I think some of that was a little bit fluky on Tatum's part more than than what was being forced against him. Uh, I'm not saying the plus eight and a half isn't isn't a, a plausible bet here, and and I agree that like if if the others come along for the ride, then that's fine. But I still think you're going to get a, a huge dose of Donnie. I guess I'm just basically staying away from from a side in this game, um, and I'll, I'll just go right into the total because I I have a lot more confidence in that than anything. So. Um, where I'm at with that is I still think if you're going to get like above 205 in this series moving forward, that you got to go under. 
Um, I, I don't think that the any kind of like explosions in the second half are really liable to keep to continue at all. And and obviously they slowed down majorly in this second one uh, in, the, in this third, the second half of this third game. Eighty one pace in the second half here um, just to a crawl basically. And, and it's going to happen when, you know, especially on the calves, when there's really just a, a couple of guys and really Donnie uh, doing the majority of the work. I mean, he's touching the ball on every possession. Now it's, it's equivalent of like SGA really with, with how much his teammates are just like, where's Donnie. I got the ball, but where's Donnie. Uh, and honestly, Jalen Brunson as well, before he got injured, it's a similar concept. And with that in mind, like I, I that's going to help slow things down in and of itself with, with one dude doing the majority of the work. It, maybe he gets a bit more help from Garland and Struess, but a short of like a barrage of threes, like they had in game two, Two. I don't see the, the Cleveland necessarily contributing to, to the total very much at all. I kind of like the under team total for both of them, to be honest. Um, but the the three point shooting in the second half last game, too, was what was re- what I'm kind of honed in on here. Ten for twenty nine um, and eight for ten from from free throw. Like neither of these teams are getting to the line. You had one game, two for the, the Cavs where they went to the line 20 times every other uh, game and of this the Celtics have not hit 20 free throw attempts uh and the Cavs other than that you know much much worse uh from the free throw line everything else has been uh like 16 or fewer free throw attempts for both these teams so they're they're really relying on a lot of jump shooting which continues to make me feel good about an under as tired legs continue to prevail throughout this series uh in quarter one of last game they shot they they scored 58 points and they both kind of got shot out of a cannon um and I still think like Jason Tatum I don't even know if 30 the, the 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 performance that he had in game three is what I would bank on I think it's somewhere between the 33 and roughly you know 20 points that he's scoring um that in prior to game three and with the struggles that he's had even against the heat and now bringing those into the Cavs series he definitely got out of a funk a bit in this last game but I ask you at what cost just because of, of the the lack of involvement with guys like Derek White until the second half and then he just kind of got going based on threes but he's still very three uh reliant here that's why even like the similarities between this series both these games that are going on on uh, Monday here, like they're both really heavily reliant on the three point shot going in to get them to the overs. And I, I don't think we're going to get that uh, games one and three. You saw 39 percent from Boston and, and those, you know, still were, were close to going under. But I think you get the 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 added benefit, like not benefit, but you get the added focus from this Cavs team that they clearly put on uh, limiting the three point line. And by the time you get to the second half of these games, like like I said, that that work is coming to fruition for both defenses where this three point percentage just drops dramatically. So it's just that point of the year, man. Tired legs are going to start to prevail a bit more. Um, and that's going to require even less like getting out on guys from three because the legs just ain't there to get the threes in. Uh, and so, yeah, I think that the, the Celtics are, are better positioned because they actually have, have more guys. There's always five guys on the floor that can shoot. Uh, I think you'll see some more Dean Wade from the Cavs as a result of needing more shooting but I don't think it's going to pull this game over 207 and a half. Yeah, it's a good look. And I think it coincides with, with the plus eight basically is just saying like, yeah, the the Celtics, they might get around a hundred again. But you know, I I think that the Cavs can still be in that range as well and covering. So I think, I think we're in lockstep on that game. Let's look at this Dallas game, which is really interesting. And it pains me because I want to take OKC. I want this to be a series uh, and they absolutely need the game. And I love OKC. I love Shea, but everything I'm crunching into just indicates the Mavs are going to win the fourth quarter. So that was originally my pick. And then the spread had continued to drop. So now it's just Mavs minus one. So I'm just like, well, now the value is just taking the game spread because they could win the third as they have, you know, these last two. And then OKC could make a comeback. You lose the fourth quarter. So I mean, official pick Mavs minus one. Also do like the fourth quarter under 51 and a half. As we've talked about, these fourth quarter unders in the playoffs have been a cash cow. But basically, my, my main logic is it is just like when it's nut crunching time, Dallas is putting up this wall against SGA and he's not getting anything going inside the arc. He is one for eight on twos in the fourth quarter here after dragging their offense for a while. And, then and you know, he's, he's managed to get a couple threes down, a couple free throws, but I just see the rest of OKC kind of standing around, like not understanding how to find their role in the playoffs to a degree. I'm not going to like throw the experience card out to a degree. It's just like Chet is slumping. J-Dub is now, he's tweaked his foot pretty bad. uh, And I don't know if if he can do much other than play off SGA in general. Like, I mean, he's never been a guy who's just like going to purely like create a step back. And then it, it is role players beyond that. And look, Dallas, their defense was just fantastic down the stretch. And I, th- I think it will continue to be. Their offense has not been that great in the fourth quarter. It's just kind of been like 
but they have Kyrie in reserves. Like it's, it's like one of those medieval battle scenes where they're like, yes, yes, let them fight it out, fight it out. And then send in the Kyrie. And like, yeah, he said he'll be a little more aggressive early on, but he looks fresh in these fourth quarters. He's getting shots when they need him. I mean, obviously the guy with the most playoff experience in this entire situation, um, the last three second halves at home, Dallas has outscored their opponents by 10 points per game, 59 to 49 including OKC in this one. The pace has dipped from 97 to 91 in the fourth quarter. Makes you like the under here uh, for sure. And I mean, yeah, the way Luka slows down because of all his injuries too, uh, makes me think like if Luka and SGA are are being like honed in on like that and, and the defense is, is going up, like the under for the fourth quarter is probably even safer. But I just I just lean towards the Mavs in this spot. Um, I, I I just can't really trust OKC's supporting cast to help Shea down the stretch. It's a good point. Um, I think when you take Ky- like Kyrie versus some combo of like J Dub Chet, um, end of list maybe for who they trust as much in the fourth quarter. Um, they, they, there really wasn't much run for other guys, which is weird because in the in the first three quarters, there's a lot of trust with guys like Aaron Wiggins and Kason Wallace. And you get to the fourth quarter and Giddy's not really on the floor anymore. Played five minutes in this last second half and a and, uh, minute and a half, two and a half minutes in the, in the game two second half. We're now on game four. Um, and Kyrie is what I'm honing in on too. I'll just, I'll just go right into my bet because yeah, the, the first and second half stuff for Kyrie and Luca is definitely what I was honing in on as well here. So I've got a little parlay. It's minus 130 on DraftKings, but it's pretty, pretty uh, conservative here for, for Kyrie to get 20 plus SGA to get 25 plus. And I think, um, you know, if you want to take Kyrie to kind of go off this game, I really did hone in on his, his post game stuff after game three, where he was just like, oh yeah, everybody was mad at me that I wasn't shooting more in the first half. So I thought I'd shoot more in the second half. And it's like, yeah, dude, is this welcome to the playoffs? Everybody's been saying that for you all, 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 all playoffs so far. Like this isn't just this series for Kyrie. You look at uh, the first half of the entire playoffs, he's averaging six points per game, 6.3. But you look at the second half and he's averaging 17 points per game in the entire playoffs, which is held very true in this series as well. It's actually the exact same numbers. It's about seven points per game in the first half and about 16 in the second half. So pretty much the same thing here. We're talking about that, like, you know, two thirds, uh, almost three quarters of his, his points are coming in the second half. Um, and Luca fades away to your point, eight points for Luca in the the second halves of, of this postseason as well. All of them. And uh, 14.6 in the first half, a little bit inflated with the 18 points that he scored in the first half of that, that game too, but still very consistent getting 14, 12 in other, in, in other spots here in the first half and just fading away in that second half. And I mean, there is a little bit of like, well, it's fine. Kyrie's here so I can let him go. But yeah, shy doesn't necessarily have that level of, uh, of, you know, that, what am I trying to say here? He doesn't have that level of room to basically just allow others to do more. If J Dub is a little bit hurt too, then you know I, I think he's a little bit more likely to be like J Dub is a little bit more likely to be passing when he's going up against Kyrie. Maybe you see him trying to actually be in the post as a passer as well. We've seen that a couple times with the smaller Kyrie guarding him and the fact that he really can't get around Kyrie to get his his open shots for J Dub. So uh, for, just to finish the point about Kyrie too, by the way, twenty plus in eight of the ten playoff games so far this year, um, and in in the regular season. Season when he played 30 plus minute, he also went over about 78% of the time uh, in terms of this 20 plus number or getting more than 19, obviously. So uh, for shy though, over the, the 25 or more in eight of the 10 playoff games. And then the twi- two times he went under, it was 24 points uh, both times against uh, uh, New Orleans when they blew him out in, in the last two games of, this, of the series. And he didn't really need to do much more than those 24 points. Um, 21 and a half field goal attempts per game for shy though. And that includes 19 uh, in the game one blowout. And then these last two up at 23 and 24 shots. So whether they're going to be as good a shots as he's taken in the regular season, they're going to be there. The volume is just going to be there. We know it is. There might be something to the idea that he needs to pass a little bit more in the fourth, but he's doing, I mean, he's doing plenty of passing. He's got about 14 potential assists per game in this series. And that's not taken away from his field goal attempts because he's got the ball in his hand, uh, in his hands for the majority of the time here. Only uh, J-Dub even comes close to the amount of touches that Shy has had in the average time of possession as well, by the way, that, that Shy has the ball in his hands. So it's just going, going back to something that we, that, you can rely on, which is this dude to have his ball, the ball in his hands in a pivotal game for 
where they really don't want to go, go down three to one, I would imagine the way for him to continue to force the issue uh, is to keep getting those those open mid range shots and get to the foul line as well. Um, and he's gone over in, in uh, every game versus Dallas this year where he's played 30 minutes. There were a couple of big blowout games there. He's up at about 39 per game as well in the series. Uh, and if he plays 30 plus minutes on the season, he's looking at getting this to 25, at least about 82 percent of the time, 81 percent of the time in between there. So it's just, this is just a really, you know, conservative bet, like I said, to still get close. I mean, minus 130 for these two dudes is something I really expect them to do. If you're going to go with the, the core bet for either of them, I prefer Kyrie over 22 and a half. I still think that's right for the taking. If you want to take that, there's probably something here that would get you something juicy. If you give, if you get Kyrie, you know, to like 30 and combine that with something like shy for 25, like just getting creative like that is fine. But the most conservative way for me to back both these guys to get their points is the way I'm doing it here. 20 Kyrie and 25 for shy. Yeah, I don't know if I would get that bullish on Kyrie for 30 or, or you know, leading point score. He's now plus 700. Shea is even money. Uh, and we correctly identified, like, he was plus 155 in this last game and, like, clearly was going to get the most usage because he, he's facing a duo that's, like, taking turns. And, and he is just, like, the only reliable source of offense at times for OKC where he just has to isolate and hit these kind of tough leaners, uh, get, get his stuff going that way. And it, it's been reliable. Um, but uh, other than that, like that's, that's just my concern. It's like, okay, so he does not seem to be playing off that the same way that Dallas has been able to play off their two stars, AKA PJ Washington, just either nailing a three or going right to the hoop, you know, attacking the closeout. Like they are playing more off their, their guys than OKC's supporting cast. Maybe they'll correct that. But right now it's, it's kind of Shea on an Island. Yeah, it's just I think you're getting a lot more from the others on on Dallas, too. That's the only hesitancy that I have with just backing Dallas right away is like is essentially like is P.J. Washington going to stay unconscious? But at the same time, like the thing that Dallas always had coming into this series more than anything was experience and and two closers versus one it's just really that simple. Uh, J-Dub and, and every other you know secondary player for this team does not amount to Kyrie on offense and and how much reliability he has. So it, it's tough for me to pick OKC. I didn't. I obviously st- stuck around with with some total stuff with you. I agree with the fourth quarter bet a ton. Um, but we'll see how it goes. You know, obviously, if it, Luca being a little bit injured as well, we'll see. We'll talk about that a little bit more in player props. But this is going to be a good day of hoops for sure on a Monday. I think these game fours are going to be really, really solid between these two teams. So continue to follow along. Also got the play of props episode, as we mentioned, up for you guys alongside these best bets. We'll continue to have both of them each and every day now moving forward throughout the postseason. So until we see you next, happy betting. Step it up.